I created a water ENP company. ENP is known to ventures, exploration, production, but you normally think oil or gas or mining. Mm -hmm. And I discovered, wow, nobody's doing ENP for water. It's kind of important. Supposedly, everybody around the world needs more and more water every day. Right. So I set that up, utilizing a lot of folks around the world who understand primary water. And so let me ask you this. So when you're saying yeah. primary water, um, there's two different ways to look at this. Number one is the more traditional way, which is you're tapping into aquifers right. that are going throughout UM describes the hydro uh, plumbing earth. system. Yeah, there's a hydro plumbing system, and you're you're tapping into these, which run throughout the whole earth, because right. there's a lot more water right. than we realize. I, I like to tell people go on to Wikipedia to Cirrus, C E R E S. This is the largest asteroid. We just sent a spacecraft to it because of the density. They're saying the largest asteroid um, in our solar system by volume. Half of it is water. And this is all on the inside, so this is a big geode. And of course, every single um, time we see a comet go by, we're not seeing the rock, we're seeing a million miles of water coming out of the rock. Right. Okay? And it's the tail that we all see. So, I guess what I'm getting at is, is, is and, and of course, in the book, we talk about the moons of Saturn and Jupiter. Um, Saturn is one of its moons, Theus. Not pronouncing that right, but whatever it is, they think it's composed primarily of water ice. That's the whole moon. Okay, Enceladus had that big, huge hydro fountain, three times the diameter of the moon, coming out. And we took a picture of it. No kids learn about this in school. It just. Space is freezing. We're all ice planets and ice celestial objects. How did yeah. they get that confused? Because yeah, they didn't know, as you know, Maggie. And that was the only thing. They were very close in the 50s to getting where you were, but they were still stuck in the dog magma. Yeah, the magma they couldn't, because they were looking at piezoelectricity and quartz and believing this water is actually created mostly from vapor, and as it rises, it cools, it yeah. condenses, and much of it is liquid. Doug, who introduced me to, to you, or what you were doing about two years ago when I first met him, yeah. and uh, you know, just, I don't know if you saw it, just days ago, this guy who tracks earthquake and predicts them on the internet, yes, yes. he saw after the Alaska earthquake here in northern Arizona, you had massive plumes of vapor come out of totally dormant volcanic areas. And that was just like the last piece of the presentations oh. that I do that it's just hard for people to you believe that H2O together. is coming out of the earth. Yes. I could show them CO2 comes out in massive quantities or methane or this well, or that. Well, that's important too. I'm like, but HO2 comes out, but we breathe. It doesn't kill us. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that there it was, and in it, right there in California, you could yeah. see that streamer. I'd say that's no. massive amounts of additional water. Right? Yes. So that's being created through near Gravitational friction, right? Yes. So if you read all the cola borehole stuff, yes. so you saved me like five years of headaches at least, because I'm going from, <laughs> from discipline to discipline going, they keep saying the same thing, you got to rewrite the textbooks. Well, who's going to start, right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are saying you're wrong. And I said, God, God bless you. You say, I've already lost half of the hair trying to figure this out the last five years. How could they all be wrong, right? And they are, because they're stuck. In a paradigm, they can't escape. Yeah, can't escape. Can't how, do you, escape. how do you spell it again? S E. Oh, C E R E S. C E R E S. Yeah. And you go down there, and it's it's you know fifty percent of it is uh, is water. What's this guy's name question. that was doing all that drilling? So Stephen Reese, R I E S S. The book you got to read the book, and you can find it digitally online uh -huh. now. Uh, it's what? called New Water for a Thirsty World, okay. and brilliant. And so he, they go by section by section. You know, I say hydro. I, answer your question about aquifers, you know, it's tough. Hydrology is another totally broken science. Yes. Hydrology, <laughs> study of water. They don't right. study water. They're, they're, uh, they study moving water, right. hydraulics, right? Yes. And so there's no, my science that we're, re we create, we're launching is geohydrology, okay. right? So it's the study of Earth's water, water yes. right? And so you've helped put the whole picture in place, getting it to the point where those moons 
the most volcanic moons in the universe. We know they're ice. That's Leo. clearly yeah. indicative. And so I've been watching the planetary scientists come back into the Earth sciences. And right. I could see the arguments going on. Like, didn't you know this? And the Earth scientists kind of going, oh, you guys just stay to space. And it's like, yeah. no, no. Same. <laughs> it's all right? connected. So yeah. I was in, you know, Doug told you I was in Madagascar recently yes. surveying in the south. Yeah, can you tell, us, tell us about that. Well, it, you know, so I have, you know, we know how to locate water worldwide, okay? And we can go into deserts are great because there's no buildings in the way there's nothing in the way you can survey you can do what you need to do by the way ancient concept of course is dowsing and what do yeah. dowsers do they Look, pinpoint yeah because otherwise driller just says what are you doing your water table's 400 feet well, well, well just drill anywhere stick a pipe in and get it we're like no 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 earth is fractured crust that allows what did, what did you think about our dowsing explanation in there oh i it was great. Yeah, I mean, you could have spent, you, I could, you and I could write 100 pages on that whole thing. Well, Bird, Christopher Bird already did that, but that's exactly, I, I can douse with all of my geophysical equipment because it's so fast to pick up the fractures, right? <laughs> it's the quickest way. And, and you see the movement. Did you know Doug's grandfather was a famous dowser in northern Arizona? Oh, he had told me about yeah, it. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> you know, I was there in southern Madagascar, I, you know, all the team that were with us, locals and French and this and that. And, and they loved it, and I said, okay, so 10 minutes ago we were all friends, now I've showed you this. Are all of us now witches? <laughs> Come on, it's, we're all replicating this, and we have a guy, a German guy doing radiometric collection. Down, up, down, up. I said, okay, so there's that. Now I'll take my passive seismic equipment and I'll show you the fracture zone. No witching, but this guy's, they knew how to pass, you know, find it real fast, right? The, the, your fracture zone, right? Weaknesses means water's gonna want to come up there. And the piezo, exactly. piezoelectric and moving in there. And you caught it. The piezoelectric in our bones is probably yeah. the physical part of how we're reading. Connection, how we're reading, right? What's you the name get of your it. company? Um, so I launched the the company is uh, Primary Water Technologies because I realized all these guys are really low tech. Paul Power, California, fifty plus years. He was mentored by Steve Reese, and they're all kind of because they're. They're just sort of out there in their science, right? So right. they just do that. So somebody's got to, you know, put this into a methodology. And always nowadays we want technology, and there are. It's kind of a cross check to the dowser. If you're like, well, I don't know about this guy, I could show you what he's seeing. You know, I could go survey right there, process it in 15 minutes, show you what's under his feet with this Russian technology. <coughs> so yeah, it's really it's pretty cool and. Uh, they brought. They wanted me in California to test at the Middle East, where I spent too much time in my life, and then come back and try to do the another water war in California with them, right? And I actually did that. Went back to Salt the Sea and showed them, Lord, you got water. All and I knew they had drilled there back in the 50s. Reese had had all the data, <laughs> right. and the developers bailed out and just got pulled back into the politics of getting water from the canals and all that. Oh, and then, of course, the marijuana guy showed up, and I said, bye-bye. <laughs> you guys have fun. <laughs> so you're already seeing a financial advantage to this. Can I make a prediction? I'm somewhat naive, <coughs> uh, but, but uh, the first group that takes and uh, charts all of the uh, known fractures and, and that in the earth, and there's got to be enough data that, that you could probably scare up enough to get a pretty good... And My then, first step was lineament study for Madagascar. So I, from afar, I could predict where I was going to go and then narrow down. It's called lineament study. And you can see all the fractures. Then, then if you take the lunar and the sun uh, and begin to put this all together, um, I really, we already know that. In fact, I'll bet you in the last year and a half, I've asked several times, I have thought to myself, we've got the most amazing technology ever known on the planet, and we still can't get very much, <laughs> very close to predicting the weather. <laughs> the predicting and I the thought, weather. And so, it's so Weather origin was beautiful. When I was up there oh, at Universal Model, and then coming back oh, and reading all this, right? and I'm thinking, this, money's got to drive this thing. Thank so you. as soon as yeah. it creates this model, it'll be a massive uh, computer program to, to bring all this together, the lunar, yes. the sun, all of the fractures the, and everything. Put that together in the model that they can predict the weather better. There's going to be some serious money to be made. Well, listen to this. So I, you know, with primary water, we understand the world quite differently. We didn't have the full picture. 
Yeah. So when you start explaining craters and, and the hydro fountains and hypertherms, it just, you know, wham. So I'm looking at the southern part of Madagascar. We're going to go drill, and they want us to look here, here, and here. This is middle part's easy because a lot of fracture rock. This one is sitting in this sort of depression of sort of white and red as sand mixes, right? And I'm looking now, where would I start there? To, you know, we want rock near surface because we're rock goers. We can hit rock first. We don't have to go through all the other unconsolidated. And I'm looking at these dry lakes. That looks like a crater. I call Paul and I pull up Google Earth. These old guys are like, Mark, stop, that's a crater. I said, I knew you'd say that. You could see this ring. And I, I said, well, they're telling me they're all just these dry lakes. I said, maybe the French dug them out years ago. And I said, you know what? I just, I said, I'm pretty sure these are craters sitting over diatremes. And yep. he's a geologist. And he said, yeah, you're learning, Mark. You're learning, boy. And he <laughs> drilled up above the Garlock Fault at 6,000 feet on craters, and he goes to the edge of the crater because it makes the diatrine makes a very hard wall, yeah. and it throws your water outward. So I went, made my presentation before I went in the field, and I said, guys, you know, this is where we'll go here. Here, where do we start after all the movements and all that? I said, this is an interesting zone, a shear zone this way and a calcareous crossing. Yeah. That would be a natural weak zone. Of course, I didn't go into it because the water was 3,000 feet over your head, about 4,233 yeah. years. I didn't want to scare them too yeah. much. Right? <laughs> right? So this yeah. UNICEF saved the children. I said, okay, right. we went down there. And we surveyed the first one. Bam! There it was. All the data was. Did you? Did you? Have you drilled down one? We, of them? Well, they separated exploration from production, so okay. they wanted to test us out. And it was under the UNICEF Innovation Fund in New York that financed the first phase. I said, when well, we came back, and they were fascinated <laughs> all the stories. They still want to guarantee that it was water. I said, well, if you had just given us the drilling rig, I would have brought you the water right now. But. Come back in a few months after cyclo season, so we should go back in about a month and drill. But wow. that was the most fat. And then we found those. There were 30, some of those dry lakes, which are in German are called Mars, M A A R, right. Right. which that's, is a. <coughs> that's what's on the moon. Because <laughs> the French yeah. know Mars as a, you know, they, the M A R, but it's not a geological term. Right. You know, but I found good explanations in French to say, yeah, this is what they are. Yeah. And they have Mars that are actual craters, like with water, you know. Yes. Water that they know is emerging that's from right. below in that country. Right? Crater Lake in uh, Crater Lake. in Oregon. That's what it is. And in fact, Jacques Cousteau had gone to the bottom of the lake or something to prove it had water. Yeah. And so I just said these are a little different. I said the only place in the world today you really see what's going on, this is going on, is high, high, hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean. And I left it at that and they were kind of like, ooh. I said, yeah, look up black smokers and white smokers <laughs> and you'll get a feeling for where all that sand came from, right? They're just like, this guy is like out of you know. I didn't get. But I had all my I didn't stuff. I did one up. of these shirts, right? right? Oh yeah, it was advertising. Because you know, I, I we know where that was, but you, you never could have explained it that way three months before when right. I hadn't read the universe box. The timing was just great on that one. So there they was, and then they're like, oh well, we've got one of those over that way. And we discovered them across this basically long structure across the south, and some of them were dramatic for water. I can do three Ds with it and just driving right up to the surface. Well, wow. you could just drill, and everybody's going, oh, you're going to have to go 1,200 feet to the bedrock to get your rock you want. I said, not nah, if we find a fracture and the water's working its way up, That's folks. That's right. So it's, it's, yeah, there's a, it's coming. It's yeah. coming.